Hey, it's Evan. I'm back with, uh, actually, Dr. Kevin. And if you can remember, he's a neuro specialist of uh, kind of various fields. So he uh, recently got yeeted from YouTube, and I'll let him explain. <laughs> okay, so I'm streaming on my backup channel, and I'd received a, a guideline strike, but not anything official. And it, it, I wasn't sure what for, and so I appealed it. And I, I get the letter this morning, and they they claim uh, gross and sexual nudity uh, to be used in an in in, in, in a sort of titillating manner, and so it had to be had to be pulled. Now, um, my initial suspicion is is that a lot of the time on this on the intro to what i do to a stream there's a very sort of iconic bit of video where a young lady uh if you want to use the expression climbs on top of an overturned uh police vehicle and proceeds to uh relieve herself on said police vehicle and i'm i'm thinking to myself well it well it's got to be that right um, because that, that's the only thing that I can think that would even th fit anything that would r remotely de describe the 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 reprimand letter that I've received. Of course, and this is without so, considering, you know, what uh, Google's AI image search thought of gorillas. But anyway, right? It's <laughs> like so, so. Anyway, I'm I'm sort of looking at it, and um, so the first. You know, usually when you get a, because I've had quite a few <laughs> shots across my bow right now, and usually there's a, there's a, they'll link close to the section, and it was sort of at the start of the stream, and I know, oh, that's the, that's the intro, right? And they'll put it, um, uh, someone in the chat is saying, is it the cock link glycans? No, it wasn't the cock linked glycans. And th they, but in, in this case, there wasn't a, a, thumbnail in, um which you could see where they'd said that there was too much excess nudity or every uh, or anything and so i just click on the uh the hot link for the video where they say uh that, that, that there's been this uh, egregious nudity and uh, of a sexual nature right and it's it's specifically it's saying it's of a sexual nature oh, I've never and never so, before probably I'm sorry, say that again. I say I've never interviewed a pornographer before. Bravo, sir. <laughs> yeah, you're you're about to, apparently. <laughs> um, unbeknownst to myself. So uh literally it's um there's a part of the stream where I'm critiquing uh this week in virology. I'm doing it in a very sort of uh tongue in cheek manner and satire and uh one of the people who is in the chat because it's like four or five o'clock in the morning anyway. I said, oh, you've left the door behind you open, right? I'm like, oh, damn. So I, I literally get out my chair to go to shut the door. And literally you can see like the sort of crack of, well, I don't know, which is probably like the, my love handle, I would say, more than anything. For like, a, you can probably see like about three to four centimeter line as I sort of have my side view to it, to go to shut the door. And imagine how quick, in front of the camera is for me to stand up and walk away and it's it's covered up in less than like a second but that's that's enough that's enough under uh <laughs> under the new uh new terms and conditions apparently to label me a deviant of some kind <laughs> and uh that's that's what took down my my channel with uh two thousand uh two thousand plus subs bastards <sighs> So what is it? A strike yeah. or what's the deal? Yeah, so it's a strike. It's my second one in uh, in the space of having a uh, another um, another strike on my uh, channel for uh, in this case, uh, what was it? I don't know. It's either it's either hate speech or some gratuitous. I've upset someone anyway, oh and like I say. I, and so I, um, so I've, I've received a two-week ban, 
uh, liter literally for what I would consider, like, not even, it's, it's not like you get anything beyond, like, as what I would consider, like, my hip, I guess, the top of my, <laughs> everyone's saying, say, I'll get my donations. It's, uh, yeah, I need an OnlyFans now. That's what, that's what I need. If you, it's if I, if I'm, if I'm hot enough to cause the AI to, <laughs> to, to blow up, um, yeah, well then, uh, then I need, uh, um, I need an OnlyFans because I'll rake it in. Apparently, the most, the most, most kawaii love handles ever. <laughs> kawaii. Oh, well, I mean, I just, I just have to. Um, I have to, well, take take sucker in the fact that sucker, I should say, of um, that we've well, that I could have that effect. I didn't. Um, oh, well, sh 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 sh. Um, you've certainly activated I'm some trying... people's almonds, and I I think they're uh, displeased. I, I've active, I've activated some some almonds. Some almonds. Indeed, you've made some people think. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, um, maybe, maybe. But uh, it's, like I say, if you want to see the offending uh, flesh, it's still available on DLive. Follow me there uh, if uh, if YouTube offends the. And I think um, it's coming to the point where it's becoming an, un an unworkable platform for anything that would, well, that's either not, um, softball conspiracy type videos, or um, or cat or Minecraft videos, I guess. Yeah, and, pretty much, uh, unless you're a big name, or well, I mean, you're gonna have. Basically, they want uh, they want basic cable. Yes, yes, I think I think that's the they, they want to uh, be basic cable, and they want to also carry basic cable. And for some reason, even though they aren't bound to any sort of decency protocols, they seem hell bent on implementing them on their own which is absolutely infuriating yes and um i i'm again i'm not sure what to you know i'm out of advice for um i'm out of advice for telling people what to do under the current circumstances you know the the well bit shoot has the argument they're funding goals so they're going to have their own live streaming with their own super chats and they are oh wonderful yeah they just I recently do. did that so they're and that could also allow for their own exponential growth so everybody uh make sure and subscribe to kev on uh bit shoot which i don't know if you have yet go get one if i account. i do have a bit shoot account i, I do I'll make sure so and, link that. Just... and i'll link my own i think it's always linked there but if it's not i'll make sure and double that double down on that and I also have to um, check with them because it's not auto updating, but that's understandable. Uh, but yeah, I, I had a period there where I wasn't doing anything, and then the podcast started, and uh, that's why we're here. So, are you are you actually doing video now, or I I have in the past, and I'll do some more. I'm thinking that might be a really good way as uh, an addendum to the podcast, as just a way that I can go over some of the uh, news and science. Because there's there's really quite a lot that's been going on. I mean, yeah, I mean, very very busy. It's been a been a hell of a year. Yeah, it's uh, it's nuts, and um, maybe we can begin to uh, unpack some of that with respect to. Well, let's um, do that, and let's start with what we were talking about just before we got on the air. Peter Dayzak, who is yes, Peter, Peter Dayzak? So Peter Dayzak is the CEO of one nonprofit organization called Eco Health Alliance, based in New York. And what they would describe themselves or, or what they're about is a multidisciplinary approach of ecological medicine. And this uh, description and uh, I guess how they're registered with Companies House, it would appear has allowed them to sh shuttle around a planet where um, governments would probably fear to tread 
and get themselves up very close to reservoirs to pathogens. And they always seem to be, or wherever eco health is, not far behind is a pandemic of some form or another. And uh, like I say, correlation is not causation. Uh, we should uh, we should always remember uh, that. But the 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 issue is is that, that he's had a very tainted reputation as he appeared on the radar as this crisis broke out and um the the first was that there was suspicion of SARS-CoV-2 emanating from the Wuhan Institute of Virology and China's uh is mightily upset about the accusation um there was a push within uh the scientific literature to bolster the idea that the um the how would you say that SARS itself was a, was a, an event bound to happen and that's what eco health alliance was uh there for and when you um when you begin to sort of scratch at the surface what you find is is that eco health alliance had been funding studies at the wuhan institute of virology specifically into bat coronaviruses and you could say okay it's still sort of circumstantial but it it was enough sure. that uh, at the time the uh, the Trump administration uh, stopped final payment of the grant to them and has put, uh, put them under observation. And then there was a big hoo-ha in the, uh, the science, especially the scientific publishing world and uh, the, the, I guess, the, the liberal elements within academia that the orange man had impeded the uh, the ability of scientists to respond to SARS-CoV-2. Well, of course, he hates science. Uh, we all know that. Right. And, um, and w w without sort of digging too far into the, uh, the details, you wouldn't, uh, most people in that, uh, well, who, who would have something of, how would you say, a, a dislike of the um the orange man that the uh that it would seem to to fit his uh his way of doing things right that he he was he's gonna do it he, he, trump's gonna do it his way hang hang the science etc it was bad enough he pulled out so paris accords and now he stopped this non-profit from being able to do its job where um it, it could give us some insight into what this uh, SARS was. And um, and then there was uh, some very, uh, what would you say, sort of core papers published uh, that uh, had his name on or involved the, not, not specifically his name, but uh, his uh, institute and from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which um, now, you basically are... said his papers by way of the Wuhan Institute of Virology? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's literally, you can go to, and so Nature, literally within, I think the last month, had to amend their papers. So, so this, this is, this is once, like I said, once you start scratching into this, the details of it just get more and more uh, bizarre. So there's a group on uh Twitter, they call themselves Drastic, uh, a lot of sort of molecular biologists on there, and I've sort of uh, gelled with a few of them, and the, uh, the, the, they, they've been following this, and they can follow the, the uh, genomics and the virology very, very closely, far, far better than I can, and they've basically just tried to raise one, one issue. Is it possible that SARS-CoV-2 came out of a laboratory? Just that question. But it, it got jumped on 
very, very quickly. And like I say, there was uh, a bunch of papers put out, probably the most famous one being uh, the proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2. And um, the uh, and then there were the papers from uh, the institute itself. And I want to say, uh, maybe I can just pull it up real quick. So RATG13, Shane, I've got to get my spelling right, Shane. Now, what are these uh, papers in reference to? Uh, so this this is the uh, so it's let me just open the tab. So this is the genome that was published. So a pneumonia outbreak associated with a new uh, coronavirus of probable bat origin. And let's just see if Peter Dazak is on that I paper. I think we might have linked this one actually previously. I, it sounds familiar to me. Mm. Well, I mean, it's it's a very very famous paper. It's where so everyone is familiar with uh, RATG thirteen because this is the genome that's ninety six percent approximate in terms of sequences in the genome. It only differs in the uh, S protein where all the uh, well the majority of the fun uh, happens. And uh, let me just uh, put the link uh, for you. And already I have uh, way, way too many chats, but one, open, open, open. All right, so that's the that's the Nature paper, and I want to see uh, if he had his name. Um, hey, uh, let me go ahead and. This article has been updated, right? So in the show links as well, people are going to want to check that out as well too. And it has an addendum yeah, so, recently posted as well. Yeah, and um, in there it was that they had to, uh, They, I think this paper says they had to include uh, EcoHealth as a, um, a funder of this data. But this, beyond that, what's happened is that um, these people have been tracking the uh, the. The, the genomics, genomics of of the, the database, database have been finding these inconsistencies, inconsistencies right? right? And then, then the uh, the the authors of this paper and others, there's about four sort of core papers, and uh, have been going and retro retroactively changing the sequence data on the GISA database. Right, I think it's the GIST database, and the um, and without informing the journal. And so I want to, I want to just Wouldn't sort of that invalidate yeah. their initial paper. I mean, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's then at the very least. Uh, uh, this addendum. So here we provide further. So they had to do further uh, ex- uh, examples of. Um, of testing, testing to because, because there's, there's this hypothesis, hypothesis that uh, uh, there was a, a bunch of my uh, I'd say miners but uh, manual, manual workers, workers who were sent in to clean a bat uh, a, a cave, cave where, where these bats, bats had been sampled and where RATG13 was supposed to have come from in Yunnan province over a thousand kilometers away. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, the uh, so I'm not we seeing it in this paper. This but, the last time we talked. So anyone yeah. that wants to reference back to that, I will I'll have that link at the end of this one and below. Yeah, and so anyway, the so as it um uh it emerges over time, these people are constantly sort of any move that these people are making, uh, it's being brought into the light, and that includes the um uh, and I've just, I can see the heinous coronavirus researcher shut down for Wuhan lab uh, connections, but uh, the, the, it's all over. You don't have to look far to find that he has this, this link to the lab. It's, it's easily established. It's not, um, uh, it's not, uh, it's not controversial in any way. Uh, within about, about the last two weeks, I want to say, uh, there was this Freedom of Information Act, which basically shows them, and uh, I can put the, uh, wait, I have the link from, 
and I can see people throwing stuff at me right now. Of course, I've lost that link, but uh, he's uh, basically the 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 crux of the story is is that he's gone round to these twenty seven academics and basically saying um, we need to come forward with a united front that this is a um, one that the politicians shouldn't be interfering uh, in in what we're doing and that we need to uh, have a united front with respect to uh, what uh, what we're saying to the science, uh, to the public the so that we're uh, act, actively stopping and this is like conspiracy theories they, 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 they specifically say we've got to stop the conspiracy theories right now so anything that it's a uh, synthetic agent or that um uh, they they've they've done, they've done experiments in some way that's led to this turn of events basically meaning the gain of function experiments and what everyone talks about as gain of function and in trying to in trying to corral the dialogue and in re, in hindsight you can see what they've tried to do they were hoping that the infection would be limited that by putting out the papers quick enough that try to say that um, SARS-CoV-2 was of natural origin. I don't think they'd expected to be or, or to find themselves in the situation that they are right now. Okay, and that means every lie is sort of bubbling uh, to the surface. And so, in this timeline, he, he it, it it comes to light that one he's uh, he's part of a network um <laughs> i'm just getting comment uh, comments right now i can't say them <laughs> on to uh um uh, I'll, I'll avoid them for your podcast maybe just because i don't want to uh um get you into trouble but uh anyway his his background is very suspicious right because he sits in this or he sits in this um zone where he's not under um academic uh administration and he's not part of the US government he's acting as this non-profit that's uh, in, in, basically involved in conservation an ngo okay. really uh, yeah yes non-profit ngo right that classic mm -hmm. the, <laughs> another classic from the bond uh the bond uh movies Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, it, that that you would have this, some. This whole crew really does evoke the the Bond villain aesthetic. I mean, you've got Klaus at the top with his literal Doctor Evil attire, and then you mm -hmm. know you've got kind of the science toady here. It's uh, it's well, it's quite something. Well, so th th so basically, what we're looking at is just one one facet of what is a much. <laughs> much more complex uh, turd, for want of a better expression, yeah, right? That links to kernel if you. Corn here. So yeah, I encourage everyone go to the World Economic Forum website and just look at some of the stuff that they put out, right? And especially some of the flashy YouTube uh, videos where they're talking about. And look, they're they're particularly famous for uh, recently having put out a. Uh, uh, a bit of propaganda because that's what it is which is um by 2030 you'll have no property you won't mind being surveilled and you'll be happy right did you hear about that oh yeah also you'll own nothing yeah you'll own nothing you're uh, oh, the, uh you're surveilled seen, oh it's 24 it's yeah. yeah i own nothing <laughs> and... i have no privacy and i've never been happier is that what it was yeah, yeah, basically, oh, that's, sort of. Th it's that's the monster, right? <laughs> right, but it, right. If you if you opened up a sort of thriller at the airport, right, whilst you were trying to decide to get something for your long, boring plane trip, right, and you cracked it open, or you read the blurb on the back, and it had that sort of as part of its storyline, you'd just put it down for just being so cliched and, and such a trope. 
right? And the fact that we've got this science, and it, it, but also all these special uh, interest groups, and it's not only it's governmental and private industries, right? And if you go to Klaus Schwab's uh, biography, um, he, he basically says he's a, a Marxist looking to mature capitalism. Right, that's that's basically like his. What the hell does that mean, after all? Uh, well, I think it, it, it's the it, it's the emergence of the uh, the communist ideal, right? That, um, uh, the, like I say, you, I encourage everyone that listens to this stream to just go and look for yourself at any anything around Klaus Schwab. It is not difficult to find. It's in your face, right? And the only problem up till recently when people have tried to look for, uh, how would you say, the, the elements of a deep state, for example, right? It's that it was always intangible as to what it was that you were dealing with or the or the individuals that you were uh, you were saying, ah, oh, they're at fault. So even Klaus Schwab, he's kind of untouchable because he leads this quasi, um, well, <laughs> Bond villain type existence, it's, right? It's Where he so, fly if it's you know, it's so insane that I, 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 it's this really all just could be in a book or a movie. It really could. Yeah, and a cheesy one. A cheesy one. And, and well, the thing is, it has been in books and movies already. And this, oh. this is why it just seems so... Well, we won't talk about so... programming or anything like that here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the... Um... Well, anyway, the, 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 the point I'm trying to get to is that um, after this... Uh, Freedom of Information Act comes out, which shows that Peter Daszak has been instrumental in highlighting or, or pushing the, the the narrative of it's uh, it's a spillover event. This is why we created the idea of um, eco uh, medicine, uh, eco, and that's what eco health is. And this interface, this green. So it comes in under this green paradigm, right? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to say that we, where humans interface with nature, they need this eco health type framework to go about their business, right? And part of part of the sort of trope, because that's what it is, is uh, all the conspiracy theories are that we're all going to be moved to the smart cities, right? Or smart cities and surveilled. Right. And the uh, and basically uh, your access to nature is is going to be limited because we can't have pandemics occurring. OK, that's oh, that's where the, where the narrative, the narrative goes. And um, well, it's just so now we've established that there's this uh, this interaction. Or, or timeline and these characters that are involved and now you've got this quasi uh sort of build a, whatever you want oligarch type uh organization in the world economic forum and now now instead of tilting at windmills like most conspiracy theories tend to do we literally have an individual and organization in New York, under Euro U.S. jurisdiction, in my view, that can be tied explicitly back to the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the fact that potentially that uh, whatever whatever this is, it looks like it came from that institute. Now, um, we can't. There's always ambiguity, and I will say it could be easily somewhat well as easily. There's well, a possibility it could that be some answered, but that would require truthfulness on the behalf of a lot of people who have no, no desire, or mm. I should even say beyond that, they have no uh, inclination to be honest. Well, in fact, they're motivated to not find that uh, or to confirm that hypothesis, 
so when a man's salary is dependent on him not understanding <laughs> the, the the cause, then he's he never will uh, uh, come to the cause. But it literally it literally looks like I don't know, like we're we're or I'm living in the end part or the or more scarily the beginning part of some uh, simulation game. Right, we we are in a simulation, and it's cheesy and corny, and uh, it's uh, what's the Arnold Schwarzenegger where it's like get your get your ass to Mars, Total oh, Recall. Total recall. <laughs> it's yeah. like 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 Total Recall, like super, uh, where he's pretending to be like the super uh, secret agent, and and so now we're looking at uh, all these features coming to coming into focus and view, but beyond the uh, what I would say 99.99% of the coverage around these people are is that we can put a name to these people and should, and should were things to function like we would expect them to be able to hold these people accountable because it's, th- 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 these people are operating under U S law. Right. And, um, and until that's been changed, they can be held accountable for a lot of this. Yes, absolutely. I would be seeking damages against EcoHealth Alliance right now. If I was right, if if people are able, well, it needs someone of sort of le- uh, legal mind, and I guess a U.S. citizen. But and the, the thing is, they've they've had a year to. Um, to sort of cover their tracks the problem is in that trying to cover their tracks they've uh they've implicated themselves even further and it's whether there's the will or desire to uh, uh, to actually hold them to account that's that's the issue and so there's there's a very very strong um uh how do you say uh, there's a very, very strong what connection? Uh, yeah, um, but it's 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 more than that. It's uh, it's I would say it's um, you, you know you're bordering on uh, you've got conspiracy already, and you've got um, and you've got what seems like a, a nefarious use of a dual use technology. But right now, it's even tying into the chaos you've got around the your elections. Right, because and there are some people. Right, because there's a there are people who mail in that would not have ever gone through. And as a matter of fact, that's a that's an interesting can of worms. I'll just drop a bit of news for anyone who hasn't caught it lately. The uh, there are two uh, can well. There's one state that is now said that it'll be contested. Arizona. This came out a few hours ago. Uh, the mm-hmm. legislature has just said we're contested. We're not sending electors, so Arizona's out of the elector pile for now. Um, and PA got uh, Pennsylvania got moved up to well now today. So in about I want to say the next six to nine hours, it'll be docketed in front of uh, Lido actually. So this could be very interesting. Also, the results of all of this will kind of determine how much more of this onion we can peel away as well. Well, yeah, and um, if we and, and like I say, we we don't know how much, um, you know, even the Trump administration is caught up in all of this, et cetera, uh, and are co-conspirators in a way. We don't. I, I don't think we'd we'd ever be able to get to that point but well, it's like right now that it... thing you know nobody really could have expected hillary to get locked up that's not a thing that's going to happen but you know we could expect some sort of censure or something to keep someone from doing this again in the future because obviously these people that should be in jail are uh, you know our version of, of elites but well well and this is a um this is a moment uh you know cuz like i say there's been so much uh smoke and mirrors right now and i would just say well even since sort of 911 you know reality has got 
that little bit more slippery uh, the more we sort of seem to progress. And the uh, we literally have a chance right now where the president of the United States could, I think, in theory, have an excuse, well, a more solid excuse beyond the election fraud, which seems uh, palpable in how... Uh, um, how blaze, uh, blatant it's been, and uh, if if you don't think it's been blatant, um, I would uh, I, I would say we're we're watching two very very different realities. I mean, how, uh, how many first world countries do you see them pulling suitcases of votes out from under a desk after clearing well, let me fact the counting on that because Snope said that never happened. Those were ballot boxes sir so that was completely wrong and you've been disproven and uh, disavowed <laughs> really i mean boxes, i i, I... Uh, not suitcases so you're completely wrong that never happened okay <laughs> so well anyway the the fact mm. that they pulled ballot boxes out of the room after counting had finished and they cleaned cleared the press out why they wouldn't know about the cameras i don't know um but, uh, that's, that's but my the understanding part that makes was it so like such a such a movie kind of thing. It's like these things seem like they're almost set up for our own entertainment. That these people are so. Yeah. It's like in some cases these people are really dumb. But mm. having dealt with some people, like I know a, I know a, a guy that works in IT in uh, like an actual Fed that works IT, and some of the people he deals with are not well to put it in the words of a great man they're not sending their best uh, well if, if potentially um but it depends where you're looking because someone uh, this little non-profit run by uh i'm not even sure he's a u.s citizen as such maybe he's naturalized now but uh he's originally ukrainian and from london and um we can well like i said the the his family history is something that i've sort of gone over um previously um and we don't have to do it again but uh there's a it seems to be building up and if if the american public right now and like i say from the beginning i've been this sort of advocate of saying one this virus is real Two, wear a mask, right? And look, I think the mask thing is m moot at this point because it's so endemic in the US that literally uh, you would have to have like a full biohazard suit right now <laughs> to 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 guarantee anything approximating uh, real performance. But it, it, you know, in the big picture, even if you could save five percent uh, of the people with uh, masks at, at a at that sort of scale, it, it makes a makes a big difference, right? But <laughs> well, at the very we're... least, as a mitigation measure, you know that you're getting that much less dose of the thing. Y you would you would hope so, and that's I mean, that would still be my argument. But now, now, right? If we, if we have to uh, extrapolate out, right? We have to now look at the. Uh, the context of all these events happening, not only in the context of the election, where China would be highly motivated and very politically and economically lines up explicitly with the World Economic Forum's ideals, right? Which is this sort of, um, well, sort of state-run, state-molded capitalism, but. Uh, you know, essentially borderless rather than, I guess, what you would consider sort of national socialism. And in, in, in a sense, the, uh, the, the... Some sort of vile mutant uh, hybrid combination of communism and capitalism. Yeah. And, and, in, and there are the party elite, and these are the oligarchs that make up the, 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 the individuals, and they are legion. Right, with, with the people that go to the World Economic Forum as a, a, a this meeting in Davos uh, once a year, 
And this is this is not something that's uh, that's uh, hidden in any way. It's just that their aims were always see, always just sort of couched in. Well, it was laughable language. I mean, a, an organization that would push something like Greta Thunberg and uh, to to sort of guilt trip you with, will no one think of the children? To now having links to this again quasi who knows what this organization really is because what we what we can look at as well is um, let me try and put that link into your uh, thing as we go through them but the um he has uh direct uh interactions with uh a bioweapons lab in uh georgia funnily enough and georgia being a uh, state in the US that's um, up for grabs is uh, interesting, uh, synchronistic to say the least. Yeah, funny enough, and, not a uh, lab in uh, ex Soviet Georgia. I'm sorry? Oh, it's just often that sort of thing is listed to be uh, with some sort of uh, ex Soviet Georgian lab. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is, this is, I'm talking about the ex Soviet. Yeah, this is ex-Soviet Georgia, not Georgia the state. I, I, was, I was just making a link that, but uh, about the, oh, you know, the oh, two oh, states. Sorry. Yeah, they're uh, they're both. There's uh, well, it seems like we're going to probably be hearing lots of stories about both of them. That's... <laughs> right, and the, the one story that you need to find out about uh, uh, the weapons, uh, sorry, the bio weapons facility or the bsl4 facility in uh georgia is eco health alliance was funding projects there and had been given i think it was six and a half million dollars and let me just read it. in 2017 the u.s defense threat reduction agency launched a six and a half million dollar project on bats and coronaviruses in western asia Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, and Jordan, with the Lugar Center being the local laboratory for this genetic research. The duration of the program is five years and has been implemented by the nonprofit U.S. organization Eco Health Alliance. Will you look at that right there? Yeah. The project's objectives are one, capture and non lethally sample 5,000 bats in a five year period. And this, is, this just cracks me up, right? So that literally means that they schwab the arse of the bat, they stick it right up there rectally. And uh, so now we can just, I just think of Carl Swab for uh, the link up to World Economic Forum. Uh, and that, uh, that didn't catch that again. Oh, an easy reminder. Uh... Right, yeah. And so this this project is still ongoing, 2017 to 2022. They have to collect 20,000 samples of oral rectal schwabs and all feces and blood and screen for coronavirus using PCR at regional labs in Georgia and Jordan, according to the project presentation. And like I say, so now, now you've got a link with uh, EcoHealth receiving uh, defense contract money from the US, uh, n- nearly $100 million from Health and Human Services, funding from Fauci's department, National Institute of Allergies and Infectious Diseases. And uh, they've just become part of a, oh, it's, I think it might even be an extension of another $100 million grant uh, that includes all the authors of the grants that said that this was a natural spillover event. <laughs> so that the, the conflicts of interest just keep stacking and stacking and stacking in a way that uh, um, in my scientific career, I've never seen anything so brazen. And maybe it's going on all the time. I don't know. But um, f- for me, as someone who's who works in that field and has reviewed grants and um reviewed papers and you know trusted i've trusted the process and tried to do my best within it right to see to see it being used in this fashion and it's not it's not accidents anymore it's there's literally four four and you could argue malice of four four because these aren't they aren't 
just sampling for the the health of communities once you've got uh defense money's going in they are um, i mean there's they're there's not the allowed under international something happening yeah in and above the international treaties that are very possibly broken by some of these activities mm. there's but they're not they're not they're not broken by a non-profit that's doing it in the name of uh, green ideals that's that's the get out clause that they have oh that's <laughs> and and dirty dirty business yeah yeah and um like i say there's um i don't know under what laws there must be like probable cause uh conspiring i mean how much money has eco health taken from the chinese how much money has eco health taken from the world economic forum Right? How many? How many? How many viruses have they actually uh, isolated, and how many have they done gain of function on? Well, that's a horrifying <laughs> now, thing to consider. Well, and and so now put that into the context of the their great reset that they want to do, and and sudden suddenly everything just um, is taking on a very rushed and um ominous well yeah ominous i was i, I was going to use the, essentially existentially uh, ominous you could say <laughs> dangerous and uh, it, i don't know i don't know what the what the plays are from here because this has gone from being just a sort of public health issue to being a a breakdown of the uh, our institutions, a breakdown of the civic um, processes that are, are meant to, you know, the, the recipients and the uh, dishing out of U.S. taxpayer money. And hang on one second. Oh, What's up, big boy? I, uh, Roblox told me I could log back into my own account, my 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 own account. Oh, actually, I'm going to take a quick a second away. Da Daddy, you left us. Daddy, you left us. Actually, later. if you want to talk to him for just a quick second, I've got to go use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Uh, he's he's uh, he's out. He just wants me to come fix his Roblox. So, oh. but you t you to take a bathroom break and yeah, I'll we just a uh, quick are on. Second. Um, and I want to uh, timestamp this too. So, forty-seven minutes. I will be right back, sir. Yeah, sure. And let me just check who we have in the comments here. So uh, I don't know uh, those that follow my channel. Uh, well, should uh, up to date on all of this. And there's a my own sort of personal feelings to or, or thoughts. Sorry, not not feelings. I want it to be, sound a bit more rational. Is that I I feel now it's just gone beyond. My hey, Alex, Alex, close the door. I do apologize. Uh, right, <laughs> if I got up again, I might flash a bit of a uh, <laughs> bit of builder's bum, get struck down. But uh, the um, uh, the, the, the long and the short of it is that I'm not sure where I can go anymore because i think the bi the biology is mapped out and the worst case scenario is that we're literally going to see um emergent cases in neurodegenerative disorders in the coming months uh, i'm happy that i can report i saw uh, a study which came out in jama today saying that stillbirths have not gone up in the uk okay um so you're waiting there so uh you back and uh refreshed yeah good to go um, so, shouldn't have had yeah, a so I was very just... large drink before i uh started this but what are you gonna do uh i um <laughs> i have the bad habit of uh how do you say just drinking constantly through the streams that i do uh i mean it's just barley tea but uh, usually by the end, I'm 
Uh, I'm in pain. <laughs> By the time I get to the bathroom, but floating, as uh, they say. Sorry, <laughs> what do you call it? Floating. Yeah, yeah. You can, uh, you can kind of feel yourself uh, floating away. Oh, right. <laughs> um. So we have twenty four. 25 people watching this so considering my channel's been taken down um i I consider that my hardcore um group i'm just getting lots of um lots of calls for more flesh (laughs) i can't believe i got taken down for that i mean the like i say i can play i can But they're clamping down on everyone. And, that, and, and, you know, that's another thing that feeds into this narrative. So um, yeah, it does seem like you know, there's the fact a that... lot of collusion on so many of these different things. You know, it's, yes. it's just so coincidental to see so much happening kind of all at once and all working together. Yeah. And so at what point is there is there any I mean, so. Look, as from from the, the scientist inside me says, well, you know, how much, how much of this is sort of nature in action, uh, the pushback against the sort of uh, unipolar world that emerged in the nineties from the with respect to the U.S. winning the Cold War, and um, well, again, how much is how much is the us playing out a simulation on on some shitty cartridge that I plugged in onto my uh, onto my reality uh, headset. So, um, uh, yeah, some <laughs> COVID COVID incidental. Yeah. Um, and it's really so. Are we? Are, but are we at the at the kickoff of okay the 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 first. Uh, interaction or, or i guess the last the west one or the or the concept of the individual individualism versus and i'm not sure what to call the other side um you'd think collectivism but it's not even something like that it's it's uh, no because there's this it's there's a deliberate oligarch class embedded in it yeah it's i you could almost call it a caste system that's mm. the nearest analog i can think of yeah, and this is and again, so this it, is too kind of based on just what we as people on the outside can see of this because we don't even really know how they run their affairs. We can right. only really guess at it. And uh, my my guess probably includes um, some of the more lurid um, aspects that have come from. Well, I mean, who talks about Epstein nowadays? Indeed. Indeed, and there's uh, <laughs> numerous pushes to keep names from being released in uh, Ghislaine's testimony, and uh, right, all that. Yeah, and there's that's uh, that's really something. The uh, just all the crazy information that's come out in just the past few years. It's almost overwhelming. Mm. And how how much we know that Epstein was. Um... I mean, someone would have to begin digging into that. But how how much has Epstein paid to scientists uh, that have focused around this type of research? We know we know he was uh, interested in that. We know he had ties to uh, Bill Gates. And this is this is this is the thing that's really frustrating to me right now is because I'm having to pull in all the organization and tropes which a lot of the sort of truth community and whatever conspiracy minded uh, community of saying, Oh, these are, you know, Bill Gates is Satan in, in in the flesh. And um, Bill Gates is heavily involved in this whole um, current set of circumstances because it's beyond just the pandemic right now. You, you will not, you will not find a university. Or organization right now that is that carries any weight in this um in this whole affair that doesn't have a, a tie back to bill and melinda gates somehow <laughs> well, so early on the man himself had said that he was going to invest in uh, just a bunch of factories and every 
place that was getting involved in this, and I know he's uh, he's had his grubby paws in some into some really untoward kind of things, I believe, in Africa and maybe South America with some genetically modified uh, mosquitoes. I don't really know uh, how that yes. all went, but I mean that's it's. I think that's it was a, Zika. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that, and then I don't. I don't know if there was ever any follow up on any of that. It all just uh, kind of. Fell I mean, on the way but, I mean, there sh- there surely is, years. but it's how how much um, headline time it gets, and how much there's so that there's such a soon right. This is this is the thing that really bothers me is that everyone was like, look, they were do- they were literally doing this in that event two I won at Johns Hopkins in last October. And then and then this outbreak happens, and then and then you find that literally there are all these ties. And now, of course, it's you know, it's that domain, and those people do those exercises all the time. But once you once you start stacking uh, everything up, it just it just starts hoovering all these other what would otherwise have been, like I say, in my mind the. That, uh, well, I'm just being reminded in my chat. Bill Gates flew with Jeffrey Epstein on the Lita Express in 2013 with a man whose charity aims to empower young girls joining the serial pedophile four years after he left prison. Yeah, that's that's disturbing. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so at, at this point, it's no longer something about science anymore. It's gone beyond that. That's um, right, yeah. I, and we can... I mean, you can plainly see it if you're willing to just look. Oh. And how how much you how much? Well, the problem is, is that you're going to say there's so many people that are complicit, and the thing is, they're going to turn around and just plead innocence. The thing is, where do we draw the line in 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 this whole debacle? Right? If you've taken money from Bill and Melinda Gates. Does that make you culpable in this in this setup? Um, does uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, well, there's all sorts of you know, people where'd... that uh, bear responsibility for I don't know all sorts of terrible things in one way or another. It's just what can and... we bring to light and what can we actually charge them with because. As long as we exist in a system of laws, we have to try and use them as such. Mm. Uh, but the thing is, they're quite happy to skirt around them. Oh, no, no, <laughs> and they have the they absolutely and are. they Just have like the I was power. Earlier, like uh, you know, Hillary has done literally crimes that people during her time in office that did lesser crimes got jail time for. Mm. Yeah, and. Uh... The uh, I'm chatting. So someone's asking who I'm chatting with. This is um I'm being interviewed for that, that fake guy Dan. Thank you very much uh, for keeping uh, your eye on the chat. You're yeah, uh, doing my best. Doing you're my a best. champ. <laughs> uh, so I, I've I've sort of you know posited the idea that I think we're much farther down the rabbit hole with respect to being on a war footing. Okay, oh, and the, uh, the 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 question is how is how is it gonna go from the, you know does Biden come in and does he make up with China and you know is there an agreement to hand over to because I can't imagine um, oh Biden would be Biden horrible or... for Taiwan I mean they're uh, they will not fare well with him at the head. There will probably mm. not be a Taiwan any longer. What we're seeing right now, <clears throat> like with the people starting to be rounded up in uh, Hong Kong into buses for re-education mm. camps, saw that literally breaking yeah. today. Yeah, and this is so. Um, where does that leave everyone else? So are they? And it seems like there's a there's a constant theme which people have uh, pointed to: build back better. We have to use this opportunity to. Um, build back better, which is this mantra of the World Economic Forum, and it might just be that they're. Um, I mean, I have problems. I mean, I, I 
literally right now, I don't know. This is how good their PSYOP is, that um, the population reduction is going to be a thing, and they're going to do it on a mass scale in the coming months. I mean, I, personally, I find that difficult to wrap my head around because you would just have – you would have emergent insurrection everywhere if that yeah. was the case. I can say – there's a lot I can say that I can't back up, but what I can say is from my understanding, the timeline of things was meant to all occur about a decade out. So everything that's being done now should apparently be on a much, much advanced timeline. Like there would be uh, more infrastructure, more systems, more checks on that side of things as opposed to on the uh, side of free people that would be able to uh, more clamp down on things like what we've seen just over this last year in social media these things would have been you know instituted and in place for two or three years and just a normalized thing so mm. with all of that happening on an accelerated scale well it uh, it really is a uh, boiling frog analogy i mean the uh they yeah in, in this in this case this noticed. this they've flicked on the microwave oven as well as the indeed convection they have. heater indeed they have and they've brought out a blowtorch to kind of try and bring it up <laughs> a little bit more too so um at, at, at what stage are that are we are, are we expecting them to limit even this discussion I mean, how far, do, I mean, we might be so, we're incidental to the types of movements that are involved here in terms of, and, and, and this is something that I've been trying to wrestle with, is that, okay, we can identify, uh, eco-health aside, because if, if Americans can't do that one thing, which is um, go after that institute for, um, you know, if you've lost a, family member you've been injured by uh, their research and i think i think a good case can be made that it was their research which brought that virus to wuhan right and I've, I've i've said that even bringing the sample to the lab that's gain of function research right there right because you wouldn't have had the uh, the the exposure wouldn't have been uh, set off in a in a dense metropolitan area but the <laughs> someone just put in the chat. The microwave is five G. Indeed, <laughs> broadcasting five G oxygen to all your corona cells. <laughs> so this is this. I, I think you know you can see in this circumstance where they've had to. Um, you can see why the misinformation, the psyop information, was ramped up with things like five G etc and it was given signal boosts like viruses aren't real because it gave them that bit of wiggle room and it it seeded enough doubt i think in the in the population of the united states that it, it immediately made it political and it, it seems that look can you give me an example of where this virus or this set of, or this situation has not managed to leverage itself against the the contradictions inherent in the US system? I've argued very strongly that like capitalism uh, exposed the contradictions in communism and we saw the fall of the Berlin Wall that right now because of uh the disparity we have uh, in our societies. And that's come about, I would argue, through the pursuit of globalist type agendas, open borders, the dismantling of uh, trade, the um, or, or the movement of trade, right? And then people following capital and that they haven't, um, they haven't, how would you say, they've not, done anything well and this is this is the seductive thing that i've seen from klaus schwab is that he makes an admission when you listen to uh a 
interview that he does where he says that we realize that our current systems have have uh, had a severe impact on the locals on the indigenous populations well you know meaning you know whites in europe etc and the um the again i'm i'm i keep running up of well this is suddenly this is not in my wheelhouse anymore <laughs> but then how do you excuse me how do you go about reining this in or is it a case of just we have to just sit back and watch what emerges over the next six months well i mean really it uh I've said this to a few people in private, but I mean, I'll just go ahead and say it. Uh, save America, save the world. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm on that train. I mean, um, if, uh, if this situation can be resolved with the election, then then there's hope. I mean, then there is one fighter that's got enough punch to actually do something. Mm. Without that, and, you know, with that fighter just not even putting in because you know joe's going to take the money that's uh that's mm. all he wants he wants money and he wants a legacy and if we're to believe his uh recent blunder that uh, if he has any fundamental disagreements with uh kamala or whomever his handlers <laughs> happen to be that he will uh develop a disease and resign <laughs> <laughs> that was that was uh he's done some perlers with respect to putting his foot in his mouth but he i think really that has. was uh that one was that was quite something i mean you you have to wonder if just uh where he's starting to slip if these uh if these moments of what he's had to talk about behind the scenes they just slip through i mean you know an older man whose mind is going he's he can't really sometimes separate you know, the private from the public, and, you know, you you just say things you didn't mean to. You blurt out things that you kind of weren't supposed to. And right. you, like, you have to wonder, almost. What was his one with respect to the election? That oh, he... right. We've developed the uh, the most broad and diverse fraud apparatus right. in history. <laughs> it, it's really... There you go. You know, that might be another one. And that's not even talking about uh, on a shaman abata to pressure or uh, bata calf care. <laughs> and he's he's the one that's going to be leading the country. Well, at, at, like so, at this point, this is the problem that I'm having. So, if everything that we're saying has even uh, a whiff of substance to it, then anything that we understand as traditional systems, they've gone. Right, that if you know, it's not like Trump wasn't at Davos, right? Right, and you know he he was supposed to be there this year. Yes, he's come out against the green agenda at Davos, and received. Um, you could say he's well, been excoriated. You know, but, yeah, I, to put it lightly, and the. <laughs> Someone just put in the chat. Biden injured his foot by biting on it. <laughs> That's very good, very very witty. Um, and so, where and, and like you say, so I'm I'm in agreement that if 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 we're to keep what I understand to be the classical definition of the sovereignty of individuals against the machinations of well, collectivism for for now. Let's just call it that. Or um, we do need America of collectivism. Uh, I I didn't catch all of that. Sorry. Or I should say, the very least, the oligarchs of collectivism. Yes, yes, that's a that's a good way of summarizing it up. Because I don't, um, you know, what are they thinking with respect to because. Everything that I say from now on, I'm just confirming all the all the worst elements that I've seen in the internet, and I don't want to be uh, accused of doing that with respect to. So they're planning a hold more on us. This idea that we're going to have to be eating insects, etc. Um, 
and this uh, th this dystopian image that's not new. This is the thing; it's not new. And so I'm wondering if I've taken the bait of something that's just taken me the wrong way. But to see just this is not secret document. Well, the emails are obviously from Freedom of Information, but uh, the the documents that we're looking at with respect to ties to defense industry, which is on my screen, which uh, relates to the obviously the pushing of the narrative with respect to um, convince or, or corralling people not to be able to question what SARS-CoV-2 is, lab, uh, not lab accident, but lab associated. Well, kind of the, uh, the way that the UFO narrative was played up until just these past few <laughs> years. Oh, you're just a crazy yeah. person. No, those are weather balloons. Well, in this case, instead of weather balloons, no, that incurred naturally in bats. You're a crazy person. And mm. um, yeah, just so so think about what we've had then this year, right? And so everyone's all off balance, right? With this, you know, everything's been tipped up. So now, now we have uh, the confirmation of ufos i mean that's a brilliant example to drag into this and on top of all the other stuff that we'd stacked up so now we've got ufos coming in and this week we had that guy from israel basically saying uh there are aliens oh, yeah, uh, there's a galactic but... federation and we're not in it and yeah well you know we can't really tell you about it because we don't want people to freak out like the classic story <laughs> yeah. it's it's all so ridiculous, like everything all at once. How how are they? Mm. It's it's exasperating, even like just keeping <laughs> up with all this because it's it is. A, I'm I'm living I've in just a comic got, book. It, it is it is a comic book, and the chat. I don't know if you're watching the chat, right? But they're saying say it, right? Which is pandemic. Well, I have an issue with going down that avenue because. I think, I I think that the plan that too, because I, from everything I can tell, it is a thing and it is real. But there is no uh, no situation in which you've got an opportunity to use that you don't use it. Or in the words of mm. Rahm Emanuel, "Never let a tragedy go to waste." Mm. And we, so it is it. Well, you could say it's planned. It's a pandemic, but. I, I've always said, well, if these people are so uh, sociopathic, so psychopathic, um, releasing an agent like this that does cause damage, right? It, it, you couldn't fake it. That that would be my argument. There's no way that you could fake uh, this type of shutting down of the world without ha without people obviously seeing that uh, there is there has to be something uh, there. Yes, and, and I don't think something. all the scientists, they're not all in on it, right? That's and um, But the problem is <laughs> how many are and how many are just willing to uh, follow the status quo because they don't want to lose face because this is what everyone believes. It's the scientific consensus. You do believe it, don't you? You don't want to mm. be you know, kicked out of everything and thought of as some sort of crazy conspiracy theorist. And yeah, again, it's, um, so I guess Todd is one of your friends or listeners and it's definitely exaggerated. Um, mm, but I'm not, absolutely. I'm not sure. Again, I would be careful about that language because I'm, I'm not sure. We don't know the long term. Uh, etiology that's gonna that's gonna pan out no, do we see it's brand new and we're already seeing it do some incredibly novel and frightening things who knows how mm. long some of them will last i mean there are people that still don't have their sense of smell back that have been free of infection for many months now yes yes and that, and... that is clear neurological damage Yes, I. I mean, I'm. I'm on board with that, but I've also. I've also been leery of the the types of shutdowns that they're that they're imposing, right? Because Japan hasn't done that. There has been this air of normality 
here. Yes, people are careful, right? The family was off school and work today because there's sniffles going around and um, it does seem like colds. It doesn't um, doesn't seem... Uh, I mean, you can speak to it yourself. It is very much a real thing. Mm. And... We um, talked about that the last time. You had quite a bout with the stuff. Yes, yeah. And I th- I think I've had it again, right? And this time I've had uh, nowhere near as bad, but t- two symptoms which I'd never had, I've never had before in my life, chillblains on my toes when uh, basically I'm an indoor cat now, right? And COVID itch. Right, and the and the chill blains are symmetrical on each foot, right? which would in kind of imply to me some sort of neural distribution, a bit like um, like the herpes zoster, where you get shingles and you get a pattern down your uh, dermatome where it's where it's active, um, and so we've got that to throw into the equation as well because we know people are getting recurrent infections right so we know we know that it's hanging around uh in the body and there the was chat, uh, they're I, wondering what is a chill blame oh i mean they're literally usually they're associated with like frost it's the stage before frostbite where you get a cold injury to your extremities and usually your toes, right? You feel your toe, toes go cold if you're out in the snow and ice. And they they basically come out like, uh, mine came out like white blisters. And they're quite painful. And um, yeah, and literally I wouldn't have thought anything of it much, but there's two, one on each big toe and on the inside of the big toe next to the other toes. Right, and it's classic chill bling. Hmm. Right. That, that, that is? That's absolutely fascinating. Yes, Vic. I, I, I watched a Roblox video to teach you how to bully kids back. Good, good. Let Daddy talk. Daddy's working, okay? Good boy. Close the door. Sorry about that. And um, uh, the young master. <laughs> the, uh... So there, there are these. So I don't know whether to say has it been exaggerated or not. Uh, is is the right uh, vernacular to use? Uh, have have they taken advantage of it? Is probably a better way of sort of trying to think of what is going on. And in 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 the well, sense of well, they. Yes, and so go to the great uh, the World Economic Forum and go to their website, and you've got that crazy Venn diagram, which links to uh, gigabytes of data and how they're going to um, sort of roll things out. And um, what is the fourth industrial revolution? Um, is that what I was looking for? Well, I know this is a YouTube clip, but and it's long. But this is this is one with I think uh, is it Klaus Schwab in it? No, it's not the one with the interview. Um, but uh, there is. Let me just find the go to their web page. But go to their web page, everyone. I'll find the the link. Yeah, that'll be org. I'll have it linked in the uh, thing below because there's just all sorts of good, horrifying shit you can look over that they're planning. It's uh. I mean, they're mm. just right there, or out in the open with it. I mean, there's some stuff in here right in your face that's not horrifying, monstrous, supervillain shit. But I mean, there's a lot that really, really is. And and look at the people in got, uh, involved. You've I'm um, I'm just scrolling down the page. You've got uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, head of the IMF. There, they're talking about bringing in central bank cryptocurrencies. Uh, Post-pandemic, how to rebuild resilience and trust. <laughs> like I said, the, and here's their uh, here's their uh, crazy Venn diagram. Hey, oh, what's the matter? Hey, hey good boy. Where is it? Oh, nice. Ah, good boy. Show everyone your teeth. Come here. Smile at the camera. Show your teeth. 
<laughs> there it is. Yeah, it came out. <laughs> sure. Oh, you got some blood as well. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> yeah, just got a tooth. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> put, put it with the others. <laughs> so uh, here's the link for the uh, crazy Venn diagram for people uh, that want to take a look. There it is in the chat. Let me just give it to you. And um, let me just make that full screen right now. And... Is it going to let you? Because um, you, you, I tried to download it. You have to sign up to download it, but um, well, they they it. wouldn't let me have the actual uh, file itself. So I can only do what's in the uh, internet. Uh, um, so you're supposed to be able to sort of load a page up, and you can see that there's all. Um, this data that we can't see. Let me just see if I can log in right now, and I'll give you the the link. But um, create an account. Can I do it? Do I want to create an account with them? I'm being I'm being very. Um, yeah, uh, I can say personally, I have no desire to do that. I, I <laughs> right. To, I don't want to ever show up on their radar. Right, and well, no, no doubt we are anyway, and. I, the question is, how much of a problem do they think we are? And I would imagine that, of course, they've uh, modeled this into their uh, calculations, that there are people that are going to call them out. How much weight do they have? You know, how quickly can channels be taken away? How much can the AI be weighted so that uh, you know, my channel gets taken down for uh, getting up to close my door, right? and uh use a fake week pass yeah um, i'll do it offline i'm not i'm not going to do it right now um and i tried i tried to register before but it it didn't let me do it and so they they seem to be selective and maybe maybe now they're less so but um Everyone can go to that page, and if you want to log in, and you can see there's artificial intelligence there, and there's just pages and pages and pages of it that you can see, and they've got all this stuff there, all this information with how they're going to deal with and how it's going to uh, grow. And it's, uh, I guess, it's the 21st century equivalent of uh, Das Kapital, and you know, where right, you know, I guess science has to play a role, but um who's uh well here we have who's our, watching our main man just rolling right down i see bill gates the five biggest setbacks covid19 has had on sustainable developments just back on the 22nd of september uh this is on their page oh yeah just scrolling down on the uh we forum ah <laughs> uh, look and science right just uh so on the top right of their page for people who just listening to this so the top is highlights vaccination covid19 with a glove and a mask next to that is systemic racism black lives matter and next to that is science with a colored uh, ambiguous i'm presuming lady with a mohawk um and you know different or, or i should say you have to say she... that they they love the science. That's right. Right. <laughs> and then and then below that, um, Whitey seems to make something of an appearance. And the yeah, it's uh, well, it's disturbing. What am I? So, let me just. I'm at the home page. I'm on, I'm on intelligence. Eh, I don't know. If it, but people people can go look at this, and um, it, it seems to me that you're you're watching ninety percent of this play out. Now, the key the key feature here is it's a lot of it's being done under uh, green um, theories or what would you call them uh, policies that you they're going for this carbon neutral idea. Yeah, using uh, which I mean, that's actually that's a really good analogy for what they tried to do with the last uh, stimulus package. There was a 
a pretty sizable stimulus package that would have taken care of everybody's needs and sent out uh, another stimulus check to everybody in America. But they had put a bunch of uh, these specific poison pills in there. Like, you, it would have removed, um, like, you can never use voter IDs ever again, which is abjectly insane that America is the only country in the world where voter IDs are not a thing. Mm. Like how? how yeah. Can, uh, <laughs> how can you vote without an ID? It's it's absolutely astounding. Everywhere else in the world, they have this very basic thing. Mm. And uh, what what to do? This this is the this is the question. And like I say, that you know, a few months ago, it was just you know. Uh, unwrapping what is the science of the virus to now we're looking at the uh, 21st century equivalent of the uh, the Bolshevik revolution again with the Klaus Schwab oligarch communitarian I don't know there's so many adjectives you can you can slap on to it that um it's di- and this is the problem it's difficult to everyone can see it but it's very difficult to 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 pin down. Well, absolutely, because it's uh, it's very spread out, and mm. it's just kind of built in at a low level into so many different organizations and uh, ideals, kind of all mm. working together towards something. You know, if you uh, if you take to account the academia that's been greatly subverted with a lot of this uh, gobbledygook. Mm. And just pumping yeah. out a bunch of uh, automatons to to spew this rhetoric, and yes, you know, but... it, uh, it's kind of gotten to the point of self propagation. Well, uh, uh, more than that, and you make a good point about it being very distributed. And actually, what it's built on is it's built on the architecture of the. The, the one technology that was designed to survive the Armageddon of the last conflict of the Cold War, which is which is the Internet. So wh- where do you come at it? You can't. Right? <laughs> well, <laughs> this, the only thing you, you can do is you can expose it, and if enough see it, and the Internet still exists, something can be done. It's, uh, it's a weight of people because it seems like we don't really have a government well we might it depends on how this all plays out but we don't really uh worldwide have anyone that's working actively to combat this mm. and the, the, the problem is is that it's a the architecture the old architecture with respect to how you respond to this which is you know what nation states were built on and you can say we had uh you know moves towards globalization um the 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 powers that exist i would argue are not geared towards dealing with this type of problem this supranational it's not a country that you're going up against right and you know if if you if you're going to go to war with the world economic forum who are you declaring it against and where are you going to send your gunships <laughs> that's Absolutely. that's the problem yeah. and you know there's um we, you know, everyone knows about Space Force, and you know the British Army has done a. Uh, you know, they're removing their tank battalions, and then investing in cyber warfare, right? And right now, th- those units are being used as uh, nudge, uh, you know, psyop nudge elements in. Dist- distributing the vaccine in in the UK. Yeah, <laughs> so, that. I'm hearing that uh, there's been a lot of talk of uh, utilizing the National Guard to uh, distribute the vaccines. Maybe mm. and, by force, maybe not. I haven't really heard a lot by force, but I have heard that the National Guard will be doing a lot towards making sure that the vaccines, the various ones that are rolled out, are uh, rolled out quickly. And uh, well, like that, the, the infrastructure is there, it right? Seems and to so, be. and so, so, but then, if when you if you come back out and, and extrapolate from that, what have you got? Suddenly, those are NGOs, 
and World Economic Forum are suddenly, by de facto, controlling the military. Even if right? only in one it's, aspect, it's, yes, it, uh, it is something. It is something to consider. And, yeah, and um, so Todd from Burke says, the Canadian military is currently wargaming their vaccine distribution plan. It's called Operation Vector. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. All these ominous names, too. Dominion voting, right. Operation Vector. Oh, <laughs> Like, like I say, it's um, we're in, we're in, we. Uh, I'm in a dream. I've, I've bought the shitty novel. I'm in a dream on the plane, and I, I just, I just took one or two extra, <laughs> one or two extra Xanax to make the flight go. I can't get out the dream, and I'm stuck in, the, I'm stuck in an empty. This, that must be what's going on because it's too, it's too improbable. Uh, well, it's not improbable, is it? I guess the message I wanted to get home, if we, if we had a take home from all of this, is that right now, all those, all, all that big picture stuff, stop worrying about it. What the, where the focus should go is to Eco Health Alliance, right? And is there is there a case to be made that they've engaged in scientific research that has led to this current uh, state? And just see if it's possible if Americans. Uh, if you know, if you know a lawyer or a, or a firm, is it possible to bring a case against them? Oh, that's and... a fascinating question. Well, I imagine it is. It's just, can you find someone's got the stones to do it? And well, the the, <laughs> the other thing is that uh, they're obviously very well connected, right? So again, you know, we know that the the systems are are broken and you know i've got a google search up for peter dayzak and i can see who do i see down there co-authors ian lipkin right ian lipkin uh is deep uh within the chinese communist party there's pictures of him receiving medals and uh he's you know he's uh, online of bragging about um you know having access to access to china that other people don't and obviously with uh, alongside Peter Dayzak and and EcoHealth, but in in effect that does tie into uh, specific institutes that you could target. So we know that there was Charles Lieber, the neuroscientist, which is another spooky story that again gets stacked onto this ties to Wuhan. Okay, and it, basically he's under uh, indictment right now, and I guess awaiting charges for not declaring funding from china itself but you look you look at the type of technologies that they were working on which is this sort of melding of uh the silicon with the uh, neural networks um again we've gone from what i saw as you know my field and my science suddenly being r accelerated right the like you say the <laughs> the the Blowtorch and the, uh, what did I say? Microwave, right? The, yeah, the blowtorch, have, the microwave, they've turned the heat up, they've uh, turned mm. the heat up in the room too, they've got the stove going at maximum. And uh, and, and right now, I've, so in the chat as well, this is, um, this is a, another factor that people are talking about. So apparently we're in a uh, grand solar minimum. Right, which is periods associated with a lot of turmoil on uh, globally, and you know we they happen about every three four hundred years, more than minimums, right? Um, and so they they kind of they're in a position to leverage that data as well, right? Because you know the the theory is is that you're going to see more natural disasters, the hurricanes are going to kick up, etc. And the, uh, the, the, well, again, yeah, the, the, we're, we're, de we're describing the uh, conspiracists' wet dream, it seems to me. It's, it's really something. I mean, just so many of these things that, uh, that kind of all come together and make you sound like a conspiracy, uh, well, 
like uh, just the classic cartoonish conspiracy theorist with the tinfoil mm. hat. I mean, like we're talking about the chemicals in the water making the frogs gay, but then you find out that mm. there are chemicals in the water that aren't turning the frogs gay because frogs don't do that, but are actually hermaphrodizing the frogs. So mm. it's like, well, okay. There you go. Mm. Um, again, you're you're forced to confront. Well, and it's it's not only that. Think how many people right now are buying into a end times narrative. In in a religious sense, that's been bubbling, and I would say has accelerated since nine eleven. No, oh, absolutely. Right. There and have been all sorts of people uh, have been specifically trying to push those narratives. As a matter of fact, since then. Yes. And so a, a lot of these people are, you know, the if it's the Hebrews dancing around sing, singing Moshiach now to the Christians thinking the Messiah is coming on a cloud to uh, Islam thinking uh, the Mehdi is coming out of a well. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, and today apparently the Ayatollah Khomeini has died. <laughs> I heard about That's, that yesterday, uh... and I had I hadn't heard anything about it. It was just some basic rumors. <laughs> I'm sorry, Red. Someone just put in the chat. Uh, this is from Kevin. Good first name. The frogs prefer to be called gender fluid. <laughs> ah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, uh, so you've got that stacked on, right? And so. T tell me, tell me a facet that it doesn't have with respect to uh, grand narratives. Debunk it is the is the question, and that's getting harder and harder to do. Yeah, I mean, there was a yeah. time when you could just say, "Oh, that's that's just really silly." There's no connections, but I mean, even today, you can Google these things, and that in and of itself isn't exactly a statement if it weren't for the fact that what Google has become today mm. is a censorious arm of uh, but Again, it's been, it's and, an organization that seems to operate outside or, or by its own rules. Absolutely. And, well, I mean, understanding even that uh, we're going to be on that very platform and are right now, Still, you know, well, that's, I guess that's kind of the thing. I mean, it's so ubiquitous that we're even using it here to uh, get out the message of the wrong they're doing. Mm. Well, but in, in, their, in their mind, we're just data points to them, right? This, this is the problem. This is why I, I, I say to everyone, right, the, the, the enemy that you're going to fight in the U.S., you can't poke your armor light out your window and get a bead on it. It's too nebulous, and it's all being done through policy and um, th these these trades, this, 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 all these agreements. So, how how what are you what are you going to go and um, demonstrate again? What are you going to go and struggle against? And you have to do that in the context of well, they've released a bio agent to to help speed it along as a catalyst, right? Because the the rhetoric from Klaus Schwab is we have a window right now with uh, COVID to do this great reset. Yeah, what they would have so taken kind of a long time to do a proper slow burn. They're just going all out. They're, yeah, they're going they're for it. The right, this is their move. And... Uh, what what advice do you do? I still think it makes sense to keep your cover right now because I don't think uh, if you get arrested by them again, you get what does this machine work with data, right? And so if you if you get if you're interacting with it beyond the superficial, I mean we're just packets right now to it that it's probably not paying that much attention to. But if you physically go out in meat space. And do something. With it. And it doesn't matter which side you're on, and you get uh, profiled in some way. So your biometrics get taken in some manner. 
that they just say, oh, that that person, you know, sits like this. And this is this is the whole issue with. Uh, well, I forgot the name of further the... on that point. Be as uninteresting a data point as you possibly can. Be as utterly mundane and banal as you can imagine. Mm. Especially right now. Okay, didn't you, you don't want to go into the hospitals, you don't want to go to um demonstrations. I mean it might be difficult if they're right out in your front garden doing something, but um it really I, I would say it behoves yourself right now to be tread lightly. You need to be like grasshopper from Kung Fu, right? Walking through the uh the well well, well, the chaos. It is chaos. Right? It really is. And You've that's gonna... and that's what they want. So again, we thought again you're using a, 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 a one of the the conspiracy tropes: order out of chaos. That's what the you know people that focus on the Masons and um, and so you know yeah. I, I, again, I'm. There comes a point where you have to say. Uh, well not contribute to the problem and that and this is one thing that we have seen is people running off with their with their narratives and in, in a sense they might be right but when you've got and like i say this is what pulled me online which was there's a large number of people who still don't think the virus is real <laughs> absolutely not and that's, that's and that's a fracture point in and of itself mm, yes very much so and right now you have uh because of them managing to shut down in the west you've got people that haven't been able to work for months and pay rent right and so literally they make they put people into debt and then come and offer the solution right which is well we'll erase the debt you get your um your basic income, et cetera. And then I don't know, the 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 ones that work and needed um I hope that's a joke from Kevin saying what virus are you talking about? Uh oh you know, just that one. Uh, you may have heard. <laughs> right. sort of and, you know. and and Sylvain says, and this is look, you hear this a lot. Only way is to put pressure on the politicians. If this is not an option there you go. Democracy is a scam. Well, that's that's kind of a moot point when we're seeing these supranational organizations manipulate uh, democracies in such a way that it's it's forcing their agenda. So the the political process hasn't worked. Well, in, in, and it that doesn't mean that's a failure of. Uh, I, I missed it. You have to. I, I, there's a problem with uh, the connection that um, it, I don't know if you've got like compression or something, but it takes a while for, so I miss a lot of what you say. Oh, that's so, right. I'll, let me, uh, I'll bring yeah. the mic a little closer and see if that helps too. But beyond yeah, that, that's, is... uh, I was going to say that it's uh, not necessarily that the system has broken apart. It's just that it's been subverted. Yes, that's, that's the issue. We we are dealing with mass subversion, and then okay. So then another trope comes up: who are the subverters? And historically, we know who they are, right? So, um, you know, what it, what are you what are you supposed to do? And um, Sylvain, so so I have a lot of heated dialogue with this person in the chat right now, right? Who's in China, right? Who says who says that China is um, is being is the victim of a sort of i guess plot by the west to to have blame put on it for sars cov2 okay and well, that's i uh, yeah i i think it i think it's a weak position because the 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 head of the ccp is very close to the world economic forum the the politics line up too easily 
when you when you start digging into it and you can just you can google klaus schwab and, and you can do it with trump but um uh, <laughs> i've got it autocomplete klaus schwab dr evil <laughs> uh, that's what, that's, uh, he really does fit the aesthetic <laughs> very much so so there's there's literally uh no oh god it comes another remind me later uh g meet schwab uh let's just do the last year uh well last year is probably difficult right but um because we've been yet again back to the subversion yeah and who's who's doing what and so um let me just see if i can find the page where klaus schwab marxist right and they they admit it on the world economic forum marxist marxism uh, oh so this is a short clip from uh sky news australia i played this the other day and i don't know i'm going to put the link for you so you can listen to it so people that are watching this right now we can uh i'm going to play it and I, like i said i don't know you, you're obviously not going to be able to hear it but and i'll use this time for a quick break all right and i will play that right now for everybody listening on my end. 19 crisis has shown us that our old systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century. It has That's laid bare the fundamental lack of social cohesion, fairness, inclusion, and equality. In short, we need a great reset. We have a choice to remain passive, which would lead to, an, to the amplification of many of the trends we see today. Polarization, nationalism, racism, and ultimately increased social unrest and conflicts. But we have another choice. We can build a new social contract, particularly integrating the next generation. We can change our behavior to be in harmony with nature again. And we can make sure that the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution are best utilized to provide us with better lives. By us, of course, he doesn't really mean the vast majority of humanity, more of an us at the top. If you uh, kind of hadn't gotten the vibe there. Released a book called The Great Reset. It is up. obvious that we are in the midst of the most severe crisis the world has experienced since World War II. 75 years ago, countries and people came together to shape the post war global order, which brought us decades of peace, increased global cooperation, and prosperity to hundreds of millions of people around the world. <laughs> now and I'm just pausing it there because there it stops time, with uh, not only to well, fight obviously Chinese military well trained uh, smart looking lot and um, yeah <laughs> this is a uh, capitalism indeed creates inequality but it's also the only system known which also creates equality this is this is said by Sky News but uh <laughs> It's kind of breathtaking, like the uh, the brazenness of it all. Yeah, uh, very much so. And then when, and so Sandra has pointed out in our chat, uh, universal basic, basic income will come and you will own nothing and be happy. At the barrel of a Chinese bullpup rifle. <laughs> um, 
or at the very least, and it someone might, that it, is not from your country, because that's the easiest thing. If you can just have someone that isn't from there, they don't have to care about you. So, well, they, much I, easier. Do they even need to do that? In a lot of cases, it, no. Look, no, I mean, you can just go to a city, as opposed to a small town, and that's enough to get uh, cops to stop caring about a lot of people. Mm. And then, and... you know, you do these kind of lockdowns and things. You can also tie that in and make use of the opportunity to make people hate cops again. Mm. And, you know, and... draw out that section of society, draw another uh, wedge in between people that uh, you can use to have greater control over them. Um, we're... <laughs> like I say, what what do you do right now? And... <sighs> Right now, don't, don't there's go. Yeah, not don't. exactly anything to do. We have to wait and see what happens. This uh, really mm. kind of falls on the courts. And if the courts can give us some kind of resolution to uh, some of these issues, which are actually being brought up. No, I'm not even specifically referring to the election. There's, there's a few things in court that could go somewhere. If they can get anything out and get the intelligence agencies doing what they're supposed to be doing for a time. I've got a mm. crackle. There. Yeah, I, I heard it. I'm not oh, sure it's bizarre. mine. Hmm. Well, but, nonetheless, uh, I mean, so... if, the, uh, if, if any of these suits can get intelligence agencies doing their job again, then this kind of subversion can be at least fought back against. I mean, mm. so this this would come down to. So I I, I talk about this in the the Brendan O'Connell uh, worldview, which is the, you know the Belt and Road Initiative, and uh, a lot seems to be playing to that narrative as well. And I've spoke before that you know. Not a lot of people know that under Trump, Trump has poured billions into rail connection that goes from the sort of tip of uh, Alaska that's going to go across the Bering Straits into Russia to connect Alberta, Canada. And um, in, in a way, it kind of, you know, you can't stop time and you can't. The inevitable march of progress, as they say. Yes. And, you know, to our children, it's just going to seem the norm. I guess my concern is, you know, are we able to get past this change without there being bloodshed or, or, or more bloodshed than there's already been? Because in my mind, there's been enough. Mm. And, the direct answer um, to that is no. The question mm. then is how much? Mm. Because no matter what happens, falling back to the whole save America, save the world thing, even if America is saved, it's going to get ugly. There are these agents and they're useful idiots that are going to, well, I mean, if there's not anything more they can do, then they have to go to their very last resort and their last resort is violence. They are thankfully outnumbered, but that will be a very ugly thing to see. I can only hope mm. that uh, we are left with this, with the smaller amount of bloodshed than the larger that would result from uh, this going through. But uh, that also ties into the timelines being off, because with this having been uh, scheduled out a number of years and had to be run up at uh, as the whole timeline had been rolled back, even, to a degree... Mm. It's, uh, I mean, to, to me, it feels the like they've, like you were, sorry for interrupting, but it's, uh, it's like you were saying, it's what was appeared to be sort of 10 years down the road, I suddenly had to be uh, kicked off right now. And um, yeah, I, and I would just finish that thought with, uh, I don't know who did that, uh, Todd says, how much blood? Well, it won't be less than last time. Which is uh, that depends disturbing. on the last time you're talking about. Let's 
<laughs> well, I mean, we have to. I would, I would presume global. Let, let's presume world war, right? So, fifty-five million dead at a minimum in the. If you just took the basic five years of what the classic nineteen forty to nineteen forty-five, I think that's fifty-five million years. Add on what came before and after it, and you get it's well over a hundred million. You could argue that uh, perished, especially when you take in. Uh, Mao and um, the Great Leap Forward, um, and I mean, he's saying just technology levels are higher than World War Two. I mean, what I what I would hope is that the the the, uh, the weapons are more sophisticated than World War Two. That you can you can get the so the the march of progress is inevitable. I guess it's the argument about who gets what at the table and how much scraps are going to be left for us um well you could even argue uh, that we're in a, a world war at this moment oh yeah i've, I've argued that for a long Just time a, a very um, different the, kind of war you know a, yeah a, a it's it's 21st century war it's an information war and it's a cyber war and an mm, economic one for that matter as well yeah and a uh, well, the it's, culture war it's, as well to, to throw in that mix too, you know, which is obviously stirred by uh, interlopers from all sides, some mm. more than others, but that's just how it always is. Yep. Um, like I say, I'm. You know, where do where do you where do you pin your particular piece on the board well the thing is i don't think the board has crystallized enough yet to really be saying much beyond well you know take basic preparations and i would say that applies more in the west than it does in the east because in the east they just seem uh, more organized uh for these types of things you know Absolutely. japan has uh a you know it's a, it's a natural disaster zone the whole country and you know they're sort of this the civic posture is good but you know we've seen the united states again uh w one of its you know what was a supposed strength which is this right to protest and free speech be well subverted butchered yeah subverted <laughs> i was trying to find another word <laughs> because it just it goes around in circles and the thing is we know where that goes Right. And um, so I would I would sort of continue the dialogue along the lines of the thesis put forward by Brendan O'Connell. And now I don't buy everything that he he puts forward, but for sh that we know that there's been mass technology transfers out of the West through Israel into China. Right. That, that that's not a um, that's not a big secret. And we also know that there's footage of. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu basically saying that, you know, uh, Israel controls so much of the modern infrastructure with respect to data that they consider themselves within the classic I-5 countries, right? And now they're, now they're a new one. Now, um, especially with the, uh, with all the peace deals that have been done to uh, get them recognized by uh, so many in the Middle East. Um, I'm just going to ask Darlene if you have a link for Krauss's studies in Israel, that would be useful. Can we have a look at that? So I knew he, I know he'd studied in China. I know he'd been at um, I think he'd been to Harvard, Yale, and Stanford. Let's just see if that's just on his bio. But um, you know, it's 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 an unspoken truism that i i would argue that people rail at uh the classic pharisees but the technological country that is um uh, da, 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 he's an honorary professor of ben gurion university mm. interesting hmm Professor Klaus Schwab. So, you know, 
Jesus, like all these awards and uh, this is not normal. This is where you've played the uh, the game and doors have been opened for you in ways that um, seem seem uh, too well <laughs> too synchronistic. Yeah, very convenient. Um, Coincidental. Let's just see him. You have to say that again. So he's trustee for the Paris Center for Tel Aviv, Israel. Let's just see how many. Uh, He's an honorary professor at Ben Gurion University, Israel. Uh, Paris Center for Peace. (laughs) <laughs> so just reverse that for war and uh doctor of philosophy Ben Gurion University 1999 and all these honorary doctorates that people push out in a career he's at um national distinctions National Order of Merit of Germany, Commander's Cross of the National Order of Merit, Germany, Knight of the Legion d'Honneur of France. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I mean, literally that list in, in this page, uh, that's literally the sort of list of all the, <laughs> all the, uh, you've got a, not only a trifecta, a multifecta of, um, well, secret, you know, clandestine groups right they're uh wow yeah i can imagine uh, here there's i mean there's just pages and pages and pages on the guy mm. it's uh it's really interesting that he's finally kind of come out from the shadows as it were and you have to mm. you have to wonder you know is there someone that's telling him what to think Right. And, you know, you have to presume that there's a, that there's something behind him. He's not, he's not there just by himself. And, you know, this is something that I've always tried to say to people is, you know, there's these entities because that's what they are essentially, especially if you want to think in the metaphysical domain. And I guess it's an easy way of just saying it doesn't have any any physical substance but in in the philosophical domain say there's people that and we know this hundreds and hundreds of people uh come to his uh, or or not the um let's see we just got down dal is a machine with respect to um, uh, we'll go ahead and grab a link to uh <clears throat> his well, this I'm just looking at his uh, wiki, got, but there's quite a lot. He's gotten a lot from uh, all these people that are. Well, I don't say I shouldn't say people from all these organizations that a number of people might consider suspect. Not yeah, in, the you know, the not in like a fly by night kind of way, but in a um, these people have been doing things behind the scenes for a long time, and everybody's heard their name who kind of runs in those circles. Mm. Grand Cordon of the Order of the Rising Sun of Japan. Uh, I mean, come on. <laughs> Is it? Let's just, I, I mean, I've never heard of that, but let's just see what. Uh, the Order or, of the Rising uh, Sun is a Japanese order. order stab- of the polar star of the Mongolian People's Republic. At last I heard, Mongolia was distinctly Chinese. Uh, yes. And uh, let me just see. Order of the West, Japanese order established by Emperor Meiji. The order was the first national decoration awarded by the Japanese government. Uh, the order is awarded to those who have made distinguished achievements in international relations, promotions of Japanese culture, advancements in their field in welfare or preservation of the environment. I can mm. very much see him getting it under environmental... Uh... Yes. Precepts. Um, well, there's a whole list of John McCain is in there as receiving it. Oh, of course. 
<laughs> uh, Dick Cheney. <laughs> Who else oh, can real, I see in this list? Man. <laughs> right. Uh, do I see Trump? Tumor, you you did a you did us all a service. F's in chat for tumor. <laughs> so uh, Trump is not in there. No, no Trump. Trump has not been awarded this order. So th so in in this narrative, right, the, the one person who has sort of taken a contrary position has been Trump. Right? He's he's the one that's gone to he had that famous speech at the World Economic Forum where he just said uh the environmentalists basically have got out of control. And uh there's a there's a picture of him shaking hands with Schwab. And it, it looks very standoffish. You know, Trump is bigger than him and Trump is looking away uh, in, in the picture. And um, it's a... But you see him shaking hands with Xi Jinping and uh, there's love in their eyes between them. So um, it's, it's uh, really something. <laughs> everyone's so... All the powers that be seem connected in some way, but I mean they kind of have to be if they're running countries and kind of the world in their way. Mm. So here's here's a uh, so I'll pull this link up just for people that are following this. So does capitalism need some Marxism to survive the fourth industrial revolution? Right, <laughs> that's off the World Economic Forum. That's um, part of uh, Schwab's thesis there's an interview he does where he's he talks about the same thing <laughs> summer davos returns to Tianjin, china next week with an almost apocalyptic feel as attending leaders and technology pioneers debate what life will look like following the robot driven fourth industrial revolution <laughs> no doubt students of capitalism will be experiencing a pang of deja vu about now for it was karl marx himself that first grappled with capitalism's internal contradictions sometime between the first and second industrial revolutions. Marx observed that capitalists paid workers less than the value of their labor in order to make a profit when expressed cumulatively it meant workers would be unable to afford the very goods they produced. Oh, and it just, it's a long article, but um, there's the, um, well, of course, there's the push it's now. Article. It's about Marx that you can't really, put that shit succinctly because if you do it all just sounds very stupid mm. well i mean but here's the thing i've i've sat and looked at this a lot and there are things that he says that are you can say okay that's a that's a valid point so in this in this sense they're talking about uh automation and it's true that many of the jobs that we are relying on today uh, can get automated away. So think how much of the backbone of countries is made up by truck drivers and moving of goods. And if that all becomes automated, suddenly you've got a whole cohort of wage earners and males generally who, um, what, suddenly they have to learn to code <laughs> is that is that where we're going? Um, well, the thing about it is, too, there's... It makes you wonder why there would be such a push against revealing, uh, like, some sort of galactic federation or aliens up until now. I mean, if you were to reveal it now, that would give everyone the, uh, the out. It's like, oh, well, actually, there's another solution, and it's right here. We can actually just go colonize mars or the moon and get all the resources there and not have to worry about polluting this world or whatever but that would give people mm. hope and independence and those are kind of things that we see wanting to be smashed out with uh, great prejudice mm. yeah and i do not have a uh, a solution in in that respect i don't so it's going to come down to is is this push if it's not successful presumably they just 
pull back a little bit and wait for the next. They- they've caused enough chaos this time that well, they've already kind of hinted what they're going to do next, which is uh, the well, our infrastructure is. They're already saying what they're going to do, mm. and that's the networks, right? The 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 next the next crisis is the uh, the weakness inherent in the internet. So we can't attack it, but they can. Right. And imagine, so people are losing their minds right now. Imagine what happens when they've lost internet for six months. Yeah. People will go people bonkers. Are, people wouldn't know what to, to do without that. And mm. that was one of the biggest crimes old Barry ever did was turning over the ICANN registration. That was such a horrible move. It really should have stayed in American hands where there is a specific First Amendment. Mm. Yep. And, uh, well, here we are. <laughs> and, we are um, you know, I can't, uh, how long ago was it? About three weeks ago we spoke. Um, so. Yeah. And so we've gone from, they're literally still just talking about the ins and outs of the virus as itself and what, you know, what, what should be doing to literally, we're teetering on the edge of the cliff of, like I say, the conspiracists' wet dream. And uh, I... Indeed. All we can do right now is just try and find as many answers as we can and spread them to as many people as possible. The more no, mm. the more can do something. And maybe the information gets to someone that actually has the power to do something. So, I mean, this is a hypothetical, but we know that Trump stopped funding going to EcoHealth. EcoHealth, I think, is the chink in the armor that could be leveraged in the U.S. rather than coming out and trying to rail at the virus itself, okay, by, you know, arguing about uh, shutdowns or, uh, or getting into fights about masks. The American people right now at this, at this moment in time need to say, what, we're, we're, focusing on this organization hold them responsible and like i said go through uh dayzak's twitter right and he's bragging about opening up expensive champagne on the night of the election because biden won right because i know i I think he knows that he's on the hook potentially if uh the election doesn't go uh towards biden oh any number of people are there's too much that's uh, mm. been set up to try and make this happen again, because if it falls apart, that means the elections can be fixed. And if the elections mm. can be fixed, then that makes it a lot harder to do something like this in the future. So, I mean, how would you feel then if they said, OK, we're redoing the election and this time it has to be ballot paper ballots only picked up at the ballot station you've got to have a a valid id and telephone number and address and it's overseen by the military as an american how would that sit with you personally i I would take no issue with that i'd rather a little bit less invasive uh need for information but i considering the situation if that were under some sort of uh Marshall Declaration, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily take issue with it. And who would you see taking issue with it? Um, Most of the usual suspects. Most of the people that have a problem with uh, voter ID laws and that have a problem with people having legitimate responsibilities. Or uh, a problem with tracking and uh, what, what am I trying to think of um so like sovereign citizens and oh certainly uh, certainly. you think they would be problematic i would imagine so i mean a sovereign is a sovereign citizen going to vote anyway though i mean are they just going to hop on their land yacht and (laughs) you know (laughs) sail down Uh, i I mean uh, who's the guy that always keeps getting arrested uh is it bundy is that his name they sort of seized some land 
up in I think it was Oregon. Oh, the Bureau of uh, Land Management. Um, yeah, yeah, the Bundy Ranch, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that 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 sort of class of people. I mean, I don't, I don't mean it in a derogatory sense, but do you think under the current circumstances they would reject entirely the idea of uh, this sort of martial law driven election? Martial I mean, law literally, type election. I I think a great number of them would actually go for it just on the merits of this is. Um... This is an important period and point in time, and you know your uh, your participation can mean quite a lot. So, I think a lot of people would uh, take a bit of that intrusion to actually get a real answer and get a real vote. I mean, I I personally mm -hmm. would. I don't care for it. I'm kind of in that same vein of person, but I would take a little bit of that personal intrusion to be able to uh, to know that my vote was counted. And if you had to think of the most obvious way that they could spoof that arrangement, what what would you I mean, obviously this time they use postal voting and the well, that what was the name of the machines? Oh the Dominion machines? Dominion. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, dude, for the that's uh, that's almost comic book like as well. It is. It is. It all is. <laughs> Dominion, Jesus Christ! Oh. Yeah. Definitely. Does it have six 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 after it? Uh, no, but apparently they do have a Chinese cellular phone that they use. To oh no! Back to uh, their main database. If the uh, Port has been opened and it's been connected, of all things. Wow! And it's true that the owner of the president of the company went into the Biden uh, administration. Uh, it's I I can't say specifically, but I believe so. Yes, and as a matter of fact, I believe when he stepped off of that, uh, one of their people. What is it? Like, I, I can't remember exactly what happened. Someone from... But... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. What happened? An Open Society Foundation person has now been uh, listed as going into the Biden administration. And then the person that replaced the Open Society Foundation was uh, not him, but the other person at either Dominion or Smartmatic is now going to be one of the heads of Open Society Foundation. I because, of course, it has understand. to tie into that. So the Open Society Foundation, that's the... That's Soros' uh, favorite George... project. Right. What was the group that the Republicans that were against Trump, what were they calling themselves? Uh, the Lincoln Project? Lincoln Project, that's right. That's right. And... Oh, talk about a psyop full of useful idiots. <laughs> Uh, dude, man, like I say, I love the US. I live there. Long time. I wish I was, well, I don't. If I was in the US, you know, I'd like to be. Uh, Montana is where I wanted to be, but, um, you know, with lots of acreage. But dang, I, I've, I'm worried for the United States right now. That's, that's how chaotic it looks. Well, to give my. From, to just give my take on things as it appears right now, if this, uh, we'll call it theft, is successful, with the timeline having been so accelerated and so many people being aware of the things that are going on, there will be blood. There will be a lot of blood. And where it has been caught early enough, it shouldn't be oceans of blood maybe just rivers mm. but uh you know tree of liberty and all that beyond that though it's i think everything's been caught early enough that the republic can be saved now the problem with that is that's a completely distracted united states of america completely mm. unable to deal with outside issues and what does china do 
with a completely distracted United States of America, what does the European Union do? Mm. We don't really have an answer to that. And I can imagine the ones that anyone's going to think of are not very good. Mm. Well, I mean, you know, I think... I think China would be modest in its territorial. I mean, because that, like, like we were saying, the warfare is more at this uh, information level and the the uh, the tech the tech level. But for sure, I can see under such circumstances, uh, China waltzing into Taiwan oh, yeah. with America m- m- unable to do anything. We did nothing about Hong Kong. Um, and quite uh, only I mean you'd have to go back to the sort of like boxer type rebellion where we were you sort of saw somewhere some imperial power coming and trying to say to China, "No, you're not going to do what you want, and that didn't turn out very well and yeah i don't I don't see um, I mean, you've got two carrier groups here right now. Are they going to stay put in such circumstances? I, I mean, I don't have answers yet. I, everything's all up in the air right now, like worldwide. Mm. It's uh, there isn't anything we can really do other than uh, just speculate at this point because there's. There's so many threads in the air now, and we have to see what lands and where. And I mean, I perish I the fort, but the the rivers of blood uh, arrive. Um, would you best est- best estimate or best case scenario? How long does that last? Not longer than a year, less a few months, maybe. Although, I, I could not see, I couldn't see a, pro, a, a, a prolonged conflict on American soil between Americans lasting longer than six months. Not reasonably. Yeah, with I mean, foreign and, interference, you know, that could change. But on a purely... Well, you've already got foreign interference. That's, well, no, I, that's I mean the problem, right? I, I mean, like direct armies, that sort of thing. I, mm-hmm. I'm just talking as things are right now, without uh, any uh, foreign armies rolling in to give aid to either side. I see that being resolved inside of six months. But international players, being what they are, being greedy as they are, and you know, being as uninterested in the individual American citizen as they are. I could absolutely see them. Uh, I, I, I don't even have answers because I don't know which way it would go. Everything's just play it by ear right now because the timelines are all fucked up. Nothing's going according to anyone's plan, as far as I can tell. And the only thing we can do is just... We don't even have enough information to know where things are going to land yet. It's mm. just... I genuinely don't like being at this uh, point or position, but there's nothing to be done about it. So, you know, all we can do is just try and make it. So, I, and again, what I would say, it's not it's not something that's uh, unknown right now. That the we've seen this set of events, and in, in, obviously at smaller scale, but we've seen what how these events go, which are these color revolutions and i've just uh, looked at my uh, comments and says wait till the blue helmets join the battle um um and as well as we've said in episodes that you were not included in if you see a blue helmet run <laughs> as well i would, I would say red but uh, as well but that could be uh, british paratroopers i'd hope they're on your side um but they should be. Well, hopefully, they're not just wearing their berries. But um, the uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you've covered in uh, your previous streams, but um, <laughs> I'm just reading. This. Every time anyone says that Israel is our only friend in the Middle East, I can't help 
but think that before Israel, we had no enemies in the Middle East. And that was John Sheehan. I'm not sure who John Sheehan is, but uh, I'm not sure how accurate that statement is. Um, we we were fighting the Turks and the, the Muslims, and uh, that's that's uh, that's yeah, there's been somewhat in inaccurate East for a pretty a pretty long while. It hasn't been forever, but there has been some kind of something going on there because they've had oil for uh, about as mm. long as we've needed oil. Before then, we didn't really care. Interestingly enough, but once we started using lots of oil. Well, it's it's not. Um, you go back far enough in history, and um, the the they pushed out of the Middle East. You know, the the Middle Ages. It wasn't until what was the Battle of Vienna, sixteen sixty? Don't tell me it was sixteen sixty six. Really? Is is that what is that what we've come up oh, to? Too much. Gate, what's the Gates of Vienna date? Gates of Vienna. I know that's September 11th, 1983, and I'm pretty sure it's September 11th. Uh, yeah, yeah, September yeah, well, 11th. Date 12th of September. The Battle of Vienna was the 12th of September, 1683. The Gates, yes, uh, September 11th, of course. Mm. Because these people <laughs> love their numbers. They love their numerology. I swear it. Yeah. I was really expecting something mm. super weird on this Friday the 13th. I I really was. I'm kind of surprised it didn't jump. Well, I mean, the there's the planetary alignment on the 21st, right, with uh, Saturn and Jupiter lining up. And, um, you know, it, yes, the, the idea that these people use symbology and these uh, these dates seem very critical to them. Uh, them i mean again who are we talking about and you know another another tangent off this story if we want to speak about our greatest ally uh, in the middle east is um where where the change towards uh how would how individuals so this is from an english but so british english so under under sort of common law where we'd sort of agreed that you know there was this sovereignty of man and he, uh, under magna carta and then um guess the year when that was subverted do you know uh, not offhand so uh it was the same year as the great fire of london huh. and and the year is 1666 and at the same time uh we have um, the Jewish cult, the Sabbateans, uh, started. Uh, were they started in 1666? 1666? But Sabbatean. So, and uh, Frankism, and I want to say 1666 was their sort of emergence. Uh, yeah, so 1666, Redemption Through Sin. <laughs> it's just one book I'm looking at. And uh, heresy we forgot. And I don't know how um, sort of familiar you are with that. But that, apparently that all, that, that, I have to sort of, it's been a long time since I looked at it. And uh, the it's a nonsensical prophecy they are talking about, to be honest. Uh, maybe. Um, but a, a lot of these things are sort of stacking up. And uh, oh, is that why they're doing the World Chakra Box opening ceremony? At nine oh four PM on the twenty first, I think it's the twenty first. It wouldn't surprise me. Oh, Anxious Aussie. G I know there was some GTX. Sort of crazy significance to when they uh opened up the um the large hadron collider with the super crazy ritual. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that that was the stuff. And there was a again there was a the opening up of this tunnel in Switzerland again that was just full of all this uh bizarre uh, satanic looking imagery and again it's it's so it seems so in your face <laughs> all the time that, that, that literally the people who are who are pulling the strings at this at this stage must just literally think that we are cattle right that to be shoved around <laughs> and and milked milked consciousness milked for uh for a moment um 
I want to just, I want to say like Admiralty law was um, established in 1666 as well, right? And that happened at the time of the, yeah, Seca V Act. Sequi V Act, it's called. And uh, it's it's basically the instantiation of government through acts where you where it's contractual right and you'll it's you have to get into the whole are you familiar with this no not at all that's the deal right so this is my uh, area of expertise it's the it's the it's the basis of the free man on the land type movement that uh as you are are born or, or basically everything subject to admiralty law until you as an individual say that you're you're doing you're claiming your sovereignty right that's basically when it began to be enacted that's the seca v act in 1666 and it's it's days and days of reading and let me just see the responsible act passed uh cqv act 1666 when all men and women of uk were declared dead and lost beyond the seas the state takes control until a living man or woman comes back and claims their titles by proving they are alive and claims for damages can be made. Right. So th- this is that type of weird free man on the land. Okay, I am um, vaguely familiar with this, but I haven't heard a lot of the arguments or really read over it in years and years. And um, it, the thing is, it does it does apply somewhat but the the problem is is that you're always trying to use their system so to to uh pull yourself out from you know to claim your sort of free man on the land status uh you have to even go and use their courts etc and so it becomes it becomes a uh a sort of circular uh argument and i guess uh you know the understanding is that under the magna carta you are sovereign and then with this act, uh, or with this instantiation of the Seca V Act, they immediately uh, consider you uh, under this admiralty law as soon as you're born. And um, a- again, there are threads that sort of tie together with this, and like the great. And as this act was being pulled through the Parliament, the, there's the Great Fire of London, and there's. You know, is that a case of uh, what, what would they call it? Jewish, <laughs> Jewish lightning, right? That um, <laughs> we we have to be uh, aware of all the time. And like I say, we had this. I don't know how familiar you are with uh, the Sabbateans either. And Not at um, all. I've only heard the name. Yeah. So uh, as the as our Hebrew cousins are want to do is that they believe. That the, the Moshiak has to come, right? That they we want the Moshiak. That's what they, that's what they cry all the time. And so this one rabbi claimed that he was the. Uh, I think he claimed that he was the Moshiak, but um, basically said that to to force the Moshiak's hand, they had to engage in as much subversive behavior as possible, right? And um, you know how how much this sort of ties in with. Uh, modern Judaism, that they sort of disavow it, but I'm not sure how much they really do. And again, it's one of these rabbit holes that normally I would be uh, leery of saying, um, uh, don't... Well, it has its similarities, honestly, to uh, some of the um, apocalyptic Christian ideals. Although it seems that uh, some of these people are more powerful than the apocalyptic Christians. Yes, very much so. And again, you're in this you're in this domain where you've got the uh, archetype. It's archetype playing in. Okay, and then and so then what do you mean by that? That's the you know that's the sort of usual response that you get and then well you're you're stepping into the uh, the domain of what Jung called the collective unconscious, and are are we really sort of are we? Mommy, I'm trying to eat my chocolate. What mommy gave me? Eat it yourself then. Um, and this, 
I forgot my train of thought because of the youngster, but I think I think this might be something we should sort of cogitate on a little bit because we've we've sort of pulled a lot together in this stream and um I have to go back and sort of familiarize myself with the the details of this. But um actually I know who would be a good person to ask and that's uh E. Michael Jones. Okay. He's am, he's very no. familiar with with this and I wonder if he would be open to uh discussion. I mean I do have contact with him. That might be an interesting uh, uh interesting conversation. Yeah, I'd very, love to have uh, two of you guys much. on to discuss that specifically. I'm probably inviting well, the minister um, by saying that, but we'll see. Uh it's, well, I mean he's he's always open for uh debates and um i don't even know if we yeah have he's much a, of a debate as a conversation on just uh our understanding of things yeah i mean that the i very much enjoy listening to him and uh i you know it's cogent argumentation um if i if i had to make a criticism it would be uh so my my problem a lot of the time around, especially with this eschatological stuff, is I think that you people can imbue it. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know it's. Uh, I'm gonna have to go. It's dinner time apparently. But, um, We're at a pretty good spot. Uh, anyway, but do finish your thought about the eschatological. Uh, stuff. Yes. Uh, I forgot what my thought was now. It, what, what, where was I going? Oh, with uh, E. Michael Jones. So he's. Um, uh, Everything's through the Roman Catholic lens, and um, he's uh, you, you kind of have to let him speak. I think, right? He's he's uh, he's at that age where uh, not not it's not criticism of his age or what he's thinking or anything, but it's like his. It's, you can you can take critique with his words and argumentation. I would say. But it's often kind of better to let him give him the floor, as it were, well, sir, rather than uh, trying to. He's at that to... point, and he's the kind of man that's a bit more of a teacher. So it's better to let him teach, and then maybe uh, question what he has to say afterwards. Certainly, I can yeah, that. yeah. Well, sir, yeah. It seems uh, you have got a delicious dinner ready and waiting for you, and I will not hold <laughs> you from it any longer. It's been a pleasure, and we are going to definitely have to continue the conversation in the future. Yeah, I will try and uh, arrange something. And please uh, subscribe to my backup channel, guys. I'd like I'd like to get that above a thousand, uh, if we'll possible. If people are listening to this, since that's the one that um, will be active that you can uh, check out as well. Uh, sorry, which one did oh, you say? I'll have a link for your uh, a link for your backup. Channel, yes, since that's the one that is going yeah. to be functional for the next few weeks. Yeah, and. Um, I'll do the same for yours. And um, do, are you putting this on YouTube first, or are you going with? Uh, I always put up the. Uh, I always put up the podcast first, so that the, the right and that's the benefit of it. iTunes, right? Uh, everywhere, actually. Everywhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, send send me podcast. those links. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, uh, uh, drop uh, them in the chat. But that being yeah, said, cheers. it's been an absolute pleasure, and we'll see everyone again yes. soon.